We are excited to get on a plane from Dallas to Heathrow today and begin our summer in Britain. Only a two minute wait at security. We are here at our gate a couple hours before takeoff. Got here nice and early. And it's interesting, I'm gonna be curious what this flight is like. Since January of 2020, I have flown to England four times. Yeah, this is my fourth time I'm going. And each flight is very different because in January of 2020, that was before I'd heard the word COVID. Um, coronavirus existed, but it wasn't something that I thought would impact my life at all, very naively. And I got back home to Texas like a month before things started really happening. Then when we were crazy enough to go to Britain in September of 2020, there weren't vaccines available. There weren't even a lot of testing options available. So what we did at that point was just a hard quarantine when we got there. That's when we were isolated for, was it 14 days? 14 days. Um, if you watch those videos of us in our quarantine flat, that was pretty interesting. But we ended up having a great trip after our quarantine where we mostly just stayed to ourselves and walked around in nature and stayed away from other humans. And then in 2021, we went for the whole summer. At that point, we were double vaccinated and we had to do lots of tests. So I did, you know, those videos back then about all of the COVID testing we had to do before, during, and after travel. So now this will be very different because we, I thought we were gonna have to show proof of vaccination. We have now been double vaccinated and double boosted, or as they would say in Britain, we've had four jabs um, for COVID, but we, we weren't even asked to show that, you know, yet checking in here and we haven't had to do any testing. So it really seems like all the restrictions are freed up. And even though I think this is going to be a really full flight, I got a notice saying that it was oversold enough that they're offering us $400 to change our flight, which of course we're not gonna do, but I'm expecting it's gonna be a packed plane. Um, that was the one good thing about when we went last year, there were still so many travel restrictions and quarantine restrictions in place that people weren't really traveling internationally. So the plane was pretty empty and each of us got five center seats to ourselves, a full row that we could lay out and try and sleep on that overnight flight. Of course that was unsuccessful because we can't sleep on planes. So this time we're probably gonna be just be <laughs> sitting there upright crammed into our little coach seats on a really full plane. And at the gift shop, look at all the magenta stuff on sale. Last chance for some Texas cuisine. Last chance for some upscale luxury retail shopping. Joe Malone of London store. We better go here quick before we leave. Ian is like Harry Potter. He has a little room under the stairs. He's trying to lay down here and take a little nap before we take off on our flight. We are not eating at a restaurant here at the airport. We packed our lunch because we are fanatics about wasting food. And so we decided to use up our last bits of food by bringing PB&J sandwiches. These are the last PB&J sandwiches I'll have for four and a half months. So we're using up the last of our homemade bread and the last of our peanut butter. And also I have to show you what I brought. My Tarka Springs water that I got this bottle like almost two years ago in our trip to Devon. But I love that it says pleasantly still spring water and has a really cute otter face on it. In general, it is four seats in the center and three seats on the side, but we got this really cool two seat row, which is perfect because I wanted to have a window and Ian wanted to have an aisle. Now's one of those times I'm glad I'm not six foot seven. 
Look at this space. Pretty tight. Yep. It's a kneecap squeeze here. I bet it won't be 93 degrees Fahrenheit when we arrive in England. We have been sitting here on the runway for an hour. There's some computer glitch with the passenger reporting and they're not allowed to leave until it gets sorted. Here is the flight path we are supposed to travel. When the plane finally takes off, that is. Five hours into the flight, and I'm on my third movie, and everybody else is sleeping, but not me. Well, and not Ian either. Here is my blurry video capture of the aerial view of central London from the plane. After a bit of a wiggly landing, we are now in beautiful Heathrow Airport at Terminal 5. And then it's time to take 75 escalators to reach baggage claim. And here's a woman with a magenta headdress welcoming me to Heathrow Airport. Oh, after the 75 escalators, there's also a tram to take. And they still have this sign on the tram to get us excited to eat fish and chips. And sure enough, I had this lovely giant fishy the next day in Newent. Then a yeoman warder welcomes me to yet another escalator another really tall escalator. Then it's time to show our passports. No filming is allowed at this point, but there were no queues and it was very fast to get through border control and customs. We just breezed right through. Just a side note, because I get asked to this a lot, since I'm a citizen of the USA, I can stay in the UK for up to six months with no visa because I am not working or studying or accessing public funds. Well, YouTube is a lot of work, but it's pretty much unpaid labor, so that doesn't count. <laughs> Finally, we are at baggage claim. So we survived the flight. It was delayed an hour, so it should have been an eight and a half hour flight. It's more like nine and a half hours. And it was fine. We, of course, did not sleep at all. I watched four movies and one TV show. And, uh, Right now, I am just trying to recover from motion sickness because the landing was a little rough. But we're glad to be here on the ground. I forgot to mention, it's 7.20 in the morning. We're ready to go, got our bags. By the way, a random comment. I have no idea what a sluice is. I've never seen that in the US. We went through border control, passport, check-in, customs, all that stuff with no lines at all. It was really fast and easy. Now we just have to find the Heathrow Express. We like to take the Heathrow Express if we are going straight into London because it's much faster than the tube. And if you plan ahead, it's not that expensive. Thankfully, we now get to take a giant lift, not an escalator, since we have all our luggage on a trolley at this point. Now it's time to lose the trolley and get on the train with our bags. This is why we travel as light as we can. Of course, we just missed the Heathrow Express, so we are waiting for the next one to come, which is now down to 11 minutes. All right, Ian, tell us your sage advice about buying Heathrow Express tickets. For the Heathrow Express, the best time to buy is 90 or more days out because it's only five pounds something. If you wait till the day of, it'll be 20 something pounds. I think it's 25 pounds. Something like that. Here we are in lovely Paddington Station. And no trip to Paddington Station is complete without a selfie with Paddington. We are disappointed that the new Elizabeth line of the tube is not open yet. It would have been perfect to get from Paddington to Canary Wharf. 
so we took a few other trains instead and made it to our surprisingly great hotel. Check out this view of the iconic buildings in central London, from the hotel all the way at Canary Wharf. This is a special hotel for our family. Ian and I had to take this selfie today because when we stayed here in 2014 with our sons, Trent took our very first ever family selfie. I love seeing this side by side, and yes, I'm still wearing the same magenta jacket. At the end of the video, I will show you the amazing room that we stayed in this time. We are in Jubilee Park, which has some lovely fountains in it and sculptures and green spaces here near Canary Wharf. Well, I am going to show you who we are meeting up with. And this is quite the coincidence. If you watched my video about eight British accents in four minutes, and by the way, if you haven't, that's a really funny video, so check it out in the description. I introduced you to Ian and Sandra Russell. Sandra I made friends with over Instagram, and her husband Ian is, like my Ian, a dual citizen, US, UK, although he is a voice actor. And we met up with them last August in Dallas when he had a conference there. And Sandra reached out to me and said, Ian has another conference. This time it's in London and we're going there this summer. And I said, okay, great, when? Come to find out, they live on the East Coast, the Carolinas. We live in Texas. And of all the days of the year, we were both arriving <laughs> There's Ian. He just popped in in the middle of me explaining this. Sandra, we both. Sandra was you from the other side. <laughs> we we all arrived in Heathrow Airport this morning within minutes of each other. So it's so this fun to meet up with them. We had a fun afternoon with the Russells, having a snack at the Fortnum and Mason Cafe, where we tried the Bang Bang Cotswold Chicken Salad with chili and peanut sauce and the charred Romanesco broccoli with coronation dressing and almonds. Some of the broccoli was this mutant variety that looked like it was from another planet. Very posh and interesting foods. And Sandra ordered the Platinum Jubilee Tea, which came in this gorgeous teapot and teacup arrangement. Sadly, none of us ordered the Scotch eggs, though Fortnum and Mason claimed to have invented that dish in 1738. Then we spent hours staying awake by exploring central London and catching some great views of the city from two different rooftop garden viewing platforms. One of my Ian's favorite things to do in London because it's free and gives a lovely view of all the great architecture in the city. If you are enjoying this video, please be sure to click that like button and consider subscribing to follow our many adventures over the next four months in Britain. And to finish the evening before we grabbed some much needed sleep, we enjoyed a tasty Greek meal near the Tower Bridge at a place called The Real Greek. They served us wonderful Greek food on tiered towers, like an afternoon tea of Mediterranean cuisine, including on the bottom tier, some of my beloved halloumi. Now for one last clip where I show you the spectacular room we stayed in at the Marriott West India Quay at Canary Wharf for free thanks to credit card points. 
once in a blue moon, we end up with a truly exceptional hotel room and for free on top of that. And today is one of those days. So we are at the Marriott West India Key and it's in Canary Wharf. And we actually stayed here in 2014, eight years ago with our sons. And we're back here again. And we had this amazing room when we came in 2014. I did not expect to be upgraded to such a fabulous room again, but we did get another awesome room again today. So let me show it to you. I'm in the door and into the sitting area, living room, which is huge has these two couches, big screen TV, coffee area. And then look at this like monstrous executive desk. I wish I were staying here for a few days cause I could do some really great video editing here. And then floor to ceiling windows that look out into the Canary Wharf area. And then I'll show you the bedroom. It has a separate bedroom with another TV, king size bed, super king, I think they'd call it in Britain. And then another great view of the water. Now please watch this funny video of the eight British accents in four minutes and stay tuned for more adventures in Britain this summer. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.